to uh, I have to apologize to you and to audience as well. Uh, there is a problem with uh, lines between projector and uh, and computer, and causes more problems. So I hope uh, we'll fix that uh, in uh, in uh, during the uh, coffee break. And now we have planned uh, a panel discussion, but I would ask uh, uh, George, uh, are you going to stay? You, you have asked to, uh, to be put at the beginning of, of the conference. Um, are you able to stay until the end of the uh, second block? Because I believe that uh, your input will, would be re really essential uh, after we hear other people. And, uh, <clears throat> I would just ask a couple of questions uh, for Ferenc and uh, if somebody from the audience has uh, questions as well, uh, I would appreciate. Uh, okay, uh, thank you. Uh, RPKI is a very interesting uh, uh, topic and uh, I was surprised that uh, uh, when I saw that 66% of uh, uh, routes in Serbia are uh, RPKI uh, signed. Uh, but can you tell us uh, why would uh, somebody do that? Uh, what is the impact if not doing uh, uh, RPKI uh, signature and uh, uh, protection of announcements? Um, well, I would start with if you don't do it right now, I would say the impact is I would say practically none, if I can put it that way. Um, but as you can see that there is quite a large uh, uh, uptake, so uh, as you said, 66%. And uh, I had a slide about that. So what, basically there are two things. What, one thing is what happens if you don't do RPKI. If you don't do RPKI, then those people who use RPKI, so you are, who are using a validator, they are going to see your prefixes as uh, unknown. And usually unknown, uh, people, uh, people understand that just means that it's not being, uh, your prefixes are not using RPKI, so it doesn't really have any negative uh, impact because people are aware of that, so they are going to, it really boils down to each user because they are completely free to do with the result of the validation what they want. So the people are not restricted in that. So it's a bit statistical to predict what will happen. It's uh, up to the user. They get the information, it's the uh, prefix is valid, and then they can configure their router in whatever way to deal with the result of the validation. So it compares the BGP announcement to the validated cache and the result can be unknown, valid, invalid. So I think the main point is if you use it and you uh, misconfigure it, but I, that usually doesn't happen that much as you saw that the, the accuracy is very high. So you can see it's not something that people normally misconfigure, but if you, you use it and someone uh, else is announcing your prefix, then most people uh, who use the validator would configure not to accept those invalids. So that would be the only, only drawback. Not using it would not be uh, at the moment a big drawback. Okay, thank you, but uh, my question, uh, let me rephrase that, was uh, uh, what is uh, security uh, danger if uh, somebody doesn't uh, use RPKI or what we can prevent by using okay. RPKI? So, as I, as I said, the reason, so what, do we, what did we have until now uh, instead of RPKI or before RPKI. So we had, as if you are aware of that, root objects in the database. So uh, ISPs uh, can use that to automate 
the creation of their filters based on those root objects. So, uh, but of course the problem is not really the right database, but the whole uh, routing registry is 30 different databases and the RIPE database, our, uh, the information we have is first-hand because we hand out the address ranges, so we know first-hand which address range belongs to whom, but in the other routing registries, for example, there was an example you saw there, it, that's not always the case, so we can't guarantee for the other routing registries that the information would be 100% correct. Okay. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, I'll try to, uh, to get my picture and to, to explain. You can jump in and yes. uh, uh, elaborate that. Uh, you know, we are trying to prevent uh, BGP hijacking, yes. and that's uh, uh, very important. Uh, and uh, some people are saying, I don't care uh, where my r uh, routing table and peerings are, are, are going. Uh, I'm, uh, I only care that my services are up and running and secure. But what can happen if uh, uh, IP uh, range is hijacked. It is that somebody else can uh, bring up uh, services, same as mine, advertise that, and do, uh, in our case, DNS, uh, uh, mm -hmm. yes. DNS uh, uh, service for, uh, for TLD, or uh, yeah. some uh, uh, services for uh, World Wide Web. And after that, we are uh, redirected and uh, also yeah. uh, have another yeah. problems. Do you want me to jump in now? So, yes. So, if you are using RPKI, that means you created your ROAS correctly, and those who are using your services are using RPKI, so they are using the validator, then what would happen is if it is hijacked, then those announcements of the hijacker from their AS number would in the validator, you would, only, you would have your ROA, the valid uh, uh, um, IP address AS number combination. And if they announce that prefix from another AS number, then the result of the validation would be uh, uh, invalid. And the idea is if now it is used broadly, then if you get an invalid announcement, then you reject that, you don't accept it. So that would, in this case, this scenario, if you are using RPKI and your clients are using RPKI, that would solve that problem. So that's, that's important on both sides. Yes, uh, it is two parts. That's why I said the most important part in my presentation was the dotted line. Microphone. Oh, sorry. The most important uh, part in my presentation, remember the dotted line. So you set it up and someone has to use it. If you set it up and someone else is using it, you set it up and your client is using it and the client configures their routers that any announcement that gets the validation result uh, invalid is rejected then such hijacks uh, would be rejected. So these uh, announcements of the hijackers would be rejected because in the validated cache, you have the validated ROA that you created. So there is uh, interest on both sides. Yes. Uh, uh, service providers and uh, also uh, providers who provide services of to course. end users to protect. Uh, yes, it only uh, works together. It only actually has a meaning when both sides use it. Okay. Thank you. Hello. I have a question. Zoran Perovic. Uh, for us, working with BGP for 20 plus years, we remember BCP38, we remember Manners, which is actually quite uh, up to date. Uh, what is the future of RPKI? Uh, because uh, all three of those, uh, how to say, initiatives are actually protecting the others from you. Yes. Uh, is, there, is there a way to enforce uh, cyber hygiene as, as, as we 
we may call it uh, in order uh, not to react on the incident, but to uh, act proactively and protect uh, for the good of the internet. Yes, um, the problem, I think, if I understand your question correctly, is because if someone asks that question, but someone else says, is the RIPEN CC now uh, like a big, big brother forcing us to uh, do our routing in a, in a certain way? Of course, we have to answer that as well. So we are not forcing anyone. And so those are actually two opposing requirements in a way. So what we have chosen for is a, you get, so now I'm talking as a provider, you get your certificate, you create your ROAS correctly, and your part is done, and then it will only work, as I said, if your clients are all also going to use it. And that's why we are really actively uh, promoting it as and as you can see probably quite a few of you were surprised that you have already 66 percent in Serbia which is good because if we have a very high percent then this automatically works because the provider has it and the users have it or let's say the users uh, uh, ISP has it and then it, it works and then you can prevent such hijackings are there other questions from uh, audience? Okay, thank you, Ferenc. Thank you.